but God had a counter plan to right what had gone so wrong. A prophecy was made that when fulfilled will restore everything that was lost. Turn to Genesis 3.15. And God said, and I will put enmity between you and the woman, and between your seed and her seed. He shall bruise your head, and you shall bruise his heel. God announces the cure before he even announces the curse. God declared that women would suffer through childbirth, and men would suffer through work. But a savior will be born of a virgin, who will restore everything back to the way it was at creation. Amen. That man, again, one day, would have authority. The first Adam wasn't responsible, and therefore, he lost his authority. But the second Adam, Jesus Christ, would be God's cure for sin. And he would be obedient to the Father unto death, even the death on a cross. Amen. Jesus would be born of a virgin. He would be raised by Mary and Joseph. He would grow up in the synagogues teaching. And he became 30 years old and he was baptized by John the Baptist. He began his ministry. He called his 12 disciples. He went out and was tempted by the enemy. And Jesus would set the stage that would change everything. He would give his life for the sins of the world. Amen. And three days later, he would rise from the dead. Amen. Hallelujah. A lot of people think when Jesus rose from the dead that he was done. But I'm here today to tell you he was not done. He still has some unfinished business to take care of. Turn to Matthew 28, 18. Matthew 28, 18, Jesus said, all authority has been given to me in heaven and on earth. Mm -hmm. The authority that Satan had has now been taken away from him. Jesus became a man so he could die for our sins and legally take back the authority that the first Adam had lost. Amen. This explains it even deeper of what happened, what Jesus actually did to Satan on that day. Turn to Colossians 2.15. Are you there? Say amen. Amen. All right. He, Jesus, disarmed the rulers and the authority and put them to open shame. By triumphing over them, he made a public spectacle of them. In short, Satan was whooped at Calvary. Amen. And he was stripped of all of his authority. That's right. So for every person who has accepted Jesus Christ by faith and repented of their sins, Satan has no authority yeah. over you. Amen. That's right. Let me remind you again what authority is. Authority is the right or power to give orders, to make decisions and enforce obedience. But to keep authority, we must take responsibility. And responsibility is the state of being accountable or answerable under any obligation to satisfactorily perform or to complete a task. So when you accepted Jesus Christ by faith, you were born again. Amen. Your sins passed present and future were atoned for, Jesus bore every sin that you would ever commit on his body when he went to the cross at Calvary. But something else happened. After Jesus took your sin, he actually gave you his righteousness. Hallelujah. And you were born again. In John chapter 3, Jesus was talking with Nicodemus. And Jesus told him that unless one is born again, they cannot enter into the kingdom of God. And Nicodemus was confused. He says, but I'm old. So are you saying I need to go again back into my mother's womb? 
And Jesus again said, unless one is born of water and spirit, he will not enter into the kingdom of heaven. So what Jesus was not talking about a physical rebirth, but a spiritual rebirth. We cannot be restored to our original state unless we have died and are born again. And this is illustrated in Romans 6, 4. Romans 6, 4 says, Therefore, we were buried with him through baptism into death. That just as Christ was raised from the dead by the glory of the Father, even so, we should walk in the newness of life. Paul is saying that God has given each of you who have accepted his son a promotion. Amen. And that promotion comes with a new name. And that new name is son or daughter of the King of yeah. Kings and the Lord of Lords. Amen. This authority is to rule and reign by allowing Christ to live and reign through your life. And now because you have authority, listen up, listen up. Now that you have authority, there is nothing standing in your way except your will. Amen. Now that you have authority, there is nothing standing in your way except your will. I mean, many of us think that the devil is in our way. How many times you've heard people say, the devil made me do it. Yeah. <laughs> right? Yeah. Man, if this devil would just get off my back, man, he's always on me. Right. Right. We give him way too much credit. Come on, come on, come on. Amen. Just like Adam and Eve, Satan can only tempt you, suggest to you, and entice you. Just like he did with Adam and Eve. When we sin willfully, it's our choice to do so. Remember, authority comes with responsibility. Are you being responsible with the authority that God has given you? How is your world being impacted for God's kingdom? As Jesus was the light of the world, he's calling for each of us to be his light in the world. I've heard people say, well, I don't have any spiritual gifts. I've heard people say that I don't think I can really make a difference. You know, I'm not a pastor or God hasn't called me. He just called me to be on the team. He, he hasn't called me to do anything special about witnessing. I just, I'm just supposed to come to church. That's it. Mm. Or maybe they think, you know what, God, I've done too many bad things. i got a real shady path. I don't think you can use me. Well, God had a response to that, and it's in 2 Peter 1 and 4. This is a beautiful verse. It says, as his divine nature, he has given to us all things that pertains to life and godliness through the knowledge of him who called us by glory and virtue. we will read that verse again. His divine nature has given to us all, not most, not some, but all things that pertains to life and godliness through the knowledge of him who called us to his glory and virtue. What God is saying is that he's given us everything that we need to live out the life that he's given us to have authority over. And if you're a child of God, Satan has no power over you. When you got saved, God gave you his Holy Spirit, and it teaches you, it corrects you, it leads you, and it empowers you to rule with authority that God has given you. Amen. Amen. Spiritual warfare, listen to this, spiritual warfare is an opportunity to fight a battle that's already been won. I said spiritual warfare is an opportunity to fight a battle that's already been won. So we got to remember that we're not fighting for victory. We're fighting from victory. Hallelujah. So when you have some setbacks, yeah. When some circumstances and situations in life disappoint you, 
Yes. Will things hurt you? Will your heart get broken? Yes. But we need a reminder of the perspective that God wants us to have. And that perspective is found in James chapter 1, 1 through 4. This is a beautiful verse. This is a verse that whenever you're going through some hardships of life to turn to, it says, my brethren, count it all joy. Not if you, but it says, when you fall into various trials. Knowing that the testing of your faith produces patience. But God says, let that patience have its perfect work. That you may be perfect and complete, lacking nothing. So God is saying,